What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about JSON schemas which define what JSON files have to look like and allow us to validate them easily. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to learn about JSON schemas in this video today. And we're also going to learn how to validate JSON files or JSON data in general using JSON schemas in Python. And a JSON schema is essentially just a JSON file itself, which defines what other JSON files have to look like. And you can have multiple schemas in your application for different use cases. So for example, you might have one schema that validates uh, JSON files uploaded by users. And then you might have a different schema that validates post request data that comes in the form of uh, JSON data. And then you can have another one that validates config files, which are in JSON format. So in general, JSON schemas are used for API validation, config files, automated testing, um, input validation, all sorts of things. And as I said, we're going to learn how to do this in Python today. So how to take JSON schemas, apply them to JSON data using Python uh, to validate any sort of JSON data that comes into our application, or maybe even goes out of our application. So for those of you who don't know what JSON is in the first place, it's JavaScript object notation. However, it's not really related to JavaScript only. It's just the name and JSON files are used in general to store information in a semi structured way uh, using just text. So what we can do here, for example, is I can create a new file here and I can call it person.json. And this JSON file here can store information about one person, for example, this is a very simple example now. Uh, but I can have maybe a field name and the name of this field, uh, the value of this field name uh, could be something like John Smith. And then I might have a field H and H could be, uh, let's use a number 25. And then I could have uh, another one is student, for example, and is student would be set to false. So you can see here that a JSON file is essentially just like a dictionary, we have key value pairs, we have uh, the keys on the left side, the values on the right side, they can be booleans, uh, integers, float, strings, everything. And we can also have lists. So we can also actually say, okay, we have actually people. And then people is just uh, a list square brackets, there you go, a list of these instances here. So I can take this here. And I can put it into curly brackets, and then I would have a list of people. Um, but let's keep it simple for now. Let's say that one JSON file in our example today in this video is going to just represent one person very simple like this, we have name age is student. Now, the thing is, if I allow users to upload their information in form of JSON, uh, and they just have to submit a JSON file with their information, they might mess this up. So for example, instead of saying 25 here, they could use a string 25, or they could even say something like 25, or something like this, or they could even misspell H or use a different, uh, I don't know, maybe H is a stupid example here, but maybe they say, instead of is student, they just say student. So the problem is, since JSON is semi structured data, we don't have a rigid system, we don't have a um, reliable structure. So what we can do is we can introduce schemas that define what the JSON file has to look like. And before we do anything with the JSON file, we validate it to see that it actually is in the correct format. So for this, of course, we need to define what the format is. And in our case, we're going to keep it simple, we're going to just say we want to have a name an age and is student field, this is a string, this is an integer, this is going to be a Boolean, and some of the fields are going to be required, others are not going to be required. And then we can decide if we want to allow for additional properties. So what if all this information is here and correct. And then I want to add a, uh, an extra field, for example, favorite programming language. And then I say Python, for example, is this allowed? Or is this not allowed? Uh, this can also be defined in the schema. So the schema itself, as I said, is a JSON file, or at least JSON data. So we can go ahead and create a new file here. And I can call this person dash schema dot JSON. And here now I need to have a couple of certain uh, or I, I need to have uh, a couple of fields here. So I start again with curly brackets. And then I have two special fields. One of the uh, one of the fields is very important. And it's the first one, it's the schema field. So it's the key dollar schema. 
And this dollar schema refers to a definition of JSON schema. There are different versions, different versions of the schemas have different functionality. In this video today, we're going to focus on very, very simple aspects of JSON schema. We're not going to go too deep into uh, references or if statements or something like that. We're going to keep it very simple. We're just going to define properties, data types and requirements. Nothing to uh, fancy about this. But of course, if you use newer versions of the schema, you're going to get additional features. Uh, and if you want to know more about these JSON schema features, let me know in the comment section down below if this video goes uh, not necessarily viral, but if it's popular amongst you guys, I'm going to just um, release another video video going into more detail here. Um, but for now, we're going to just use one version of the JSON schema, we're going to say HTTP colon slash slash and then JSON dash schema dot org slash draft dash 07. This is the version and then slash schema and a hashtag, even though I don't know if that's uh, required. But you can also change this draft 07 to something else, you can just go to the JSON schema org site and look at the different versions. But for our purposes today, this is going to be enough, we're going to just keep this one. Uh, and the second field, it's not required, but it is recommended is the ID field, or to be precise, the dollar ID field. And this is the unique identifier of this particular schema. Now, the thing is, it's recommended to use a URI. And even if you don't own a domain, so even if you don't have an actual domain, you can make one up, you can, um, you know, uh, use a fake domain that does not exist, or you can uh, use localhost if you want, or something like that. But you should use a URI because then you can have a base URI, a URI that you can use for references, if you want to use some more advanced features. But a common example of this would be something like, um, your own website, in my case, neural9.com, and then slash my dash person schema. This is just a unique identifier uh, that identifies this particular JSON schema. So it's recommended to have something like this, even though it's not required. So you can also omit this if you don't want to have it. Uh, then we want to have a title for the schema, we're going to just call this person, then we want to have, uh, and this is now the important part, we want to have properties. So properties are definitions of what we want to have here in our JSON files. And in our case, we want to have name, age and is student. So we want to say here, name is going to be one property and the property itself is again, a dictionary of certain key value pairs. And in our case, we're going to just use one, which is going to be the type and the type of name is going to be string like this, actually with a lowercase s. So this uh, JSON schema defines now that there is a key name, and the value has to be string of type string. Um, then we can say h, same procedure, we're going to say type, and the type of the h is going to be integer. Now we can add an additional field here, for example, we can say minimum, the minimum h is going to be zero because we don't want to allow for negative ages. Uh, and then we can say is student. Um, and we want to say <clears throat> type is Boolean. So those are now the definitions of the properties, what we can now do is we can say which of those properties are required. And we can do that down here with a separate field required and required is going to uh, point to a list of um, strings and the strings are going to just say which properties are required. So name and age, for example, in this case is student would be an optional uh, key value pair, we don't have to, um, we don't have to actually define it. Also, with this JSON schema that I have right now, additional properties would be allowed. So I could just add some stuff at the end, and it would be valid, even though the keys are not listed here. If I only want to allow for keys that I listed here, I want to uh, specify the key value pair additional properties. And I want to set it to false, because false means I'm not allowing additional properties. All right, so this is the JSON schema. Now you can validate this with different tools with different languages, but we're going to focus on Python today. So we're going to go and open up a new Python file main.py. And we're going to have to install a package called JSON schema. So pip or pip three install JSON schema. And in my case, it's already installed. And then we're going to say, 
um, import JSON and then from JSON schema import validate from JSON schema dot exceptions import validation error. And now what we want to do is we want to load the JSON file. So we want to say with open and then person dot come on person dot JSON. Uh, open this in reading mode, which is the default as F. And then we want to say the document that we want to validate is going to be F dot read. And then we want to say open also the person schema JSON SF. And this is going to be our schema F dot read or actually sorry, we don't say F dot read, we say JSON dot load F. And we say JSON dot load F down here as well. Um, so now we have a JSON object schema, a JSON object document. And what we want to do now is we want to say, try the following, try something, try the validation. And then if the validation fails with, with a validation error, as E, we're going to just print validation failed. And then we can say print maybe an F string here, error message is going to be E dot message. Um, and the actual validation happens here now in the try section. And we're going to just say validate the instance, which is equal to the document with the schema, which is equal to the schema. And then we're just going to say print validation succeeded if it worked. Now I closed it. There you go. Uh, so this is actually the validator. I can just run this now and it will say validation succeeded. Now, if I go to the person and I change the age to 25.4, which makes it a float now, uh, you're going to see that when I run this validation failed error message 25.4 is not of type integer. Okay, this is also the case when I use quotations. So if I run this again, not of type integer. Okay. Um, I can also, you know, omit this key. So I can just do it like this, it will then tell me that the H is a required property, it cannot be found, it will not tell me that if I just remove the student, or is student, you can see it succeeded. But if I add something else, so if I say test here, for example, one, two, three, uh, then we're going to see that additional properties are not allowed test was unexpected. This is also the case if I have is student in here. So it is not related to that. Um, yeah, and this is how you validate JSON files or JSON data in general using JSON schemas in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.